The disciple asked, Om, by whose will directed does the mind proceed to its object? At whose command does the prana, the foremost, do its duty? At whose will do men utter speech? Who is the God that directs the eyes and the ears? The teacher replied, It is the ear of the ear, the mind of the mind, the speech of speech, the life of life, and the eye of the eye. Having detached the self from the sense organs and renounced the world, the wise attain to immortality. The eye does not go thither, nor speech, nor the mind. We do not know it. We do not understand how anyone can teach it. It is different from the known. It is above the unknown. Thus we have heard from the preceptors of old, who taught it to us. That which cannot be expressed by speech, but by which speech is expressed, that alone know as Brahman, and not what people here worship. <clears throat> That's a line from the Kano Upanishad, one of the older Upanishads, one of the Hindu scriptures. And it deals with the subject of karma, and how karma is accumulated. One could say it deals with, in Western parlance, experience, and how experience is accumulated, how we are nurtured by our experiences. Um, it says the ear of the ear, the mind of the mind, the eye of the eye. The ear of the ear is that which is on the receiving end of what the ear hears. Uh, the mind of the mind is, I referred to a couple of videos back, that which is attempting to impose discipline on the mind in the case of self-discipline. Um, the speech of the speech. <coughs> I guess that um, that's the sort of thing that Noam Chomsky would call e-language. It's not so much what you say, it's what you mean to convey. Um, life of life, eye of eye. Go, and just keep going. Um, what is on the receiving end of all the information gleaned by our senses? I'm not saying that it is an I, or an identity, or a soul, or whatever you want to call it. But, as it infers here, it is above the unknown, and it is different from the known. Because it is the knower of that which is known. It's not something that can be known. It's some sort of tautology, um, because it's that which knows that which is known. <laughs> um, it's a kind of an awkward thing to wrap your mind around, but if you just sort of play with it inside your head for a while, you can figure out what it means. Um, the only way I've ever heard it expressed in scientific terms, or in terms of some, some sort of certainty, is consciousness simply is an endless loop. Okay, but still, something is interpreting all of this. Something is placing value on everything. Something is interpreting it, like I said. Um, <clears throat> I, one could say that we're talking about the will. Because everything comes in at us. Everything comes in through the senses. But things go back out. Desire, will, that kind of thing. Interpretation. Um, categorization, all this kind of thing. We do all of that. It does not appear phenomenally. Whatever it is that places categories on things where categories do not actually phenomenally exist um, is what this Upanishad refers to. It doesn't have to be a soul. It doesn't have to be anything you take on faith. This is just a line of reasoning that is taking place here. It's not anyone trying to sell you on an idea, however much it sounds like it. Um, so, the will, the idea of the will, per se Schopenhauer and um, Nietzsche, is the inner, I would say, intervention in one's inner life. It's nothing coming from outside going in. It's from what's in going out. That's the will. 
And I think one could say that this Upanishad is describing the will. We see the world around us. We want the world to be nice. <laughs> um, we want the world to be enjoyable. Something wants. Something wants life to be good, pleasurable, enjoyable, non-futile, uh, happy, joyful, full of knowledge, that kind of thing. We, this is our dreams, or these are our dreams. Um, Zopfe again, he says in his last Messiah, we want all these things and we can't have them in the very nature of things. Well, okay, he just blurts that out and says, you have to accept that at face value. I've just said we can't do it. All right, <laughs> that's nice, Mr. Zopfe, but you, you're, if you're going to say something like that, you're going to have to back it up. I see too much evidence for the will in action. I see too much evidence of people trying to influence other people. That's the will. You're trying to influence that which is outside of you. Just building this house around me or buying this computer and setting it up in front of me here is an exercise in will. I want something. Um, I want improvement. I want things to be better. Um, desire. Karma, if you ask me, is that which comes at us. Outside influences acting upon us. You would think that your memories are a subject, are a product of the will, but I'm not quite so sure. I'm not quite sure about that. I don't. I don't think so. I would say that memories are something akin to one's facticity, as the French existentialists would put it. Um, and in that way, it is karma. Although, facticity is, might be a bad fit, because facticity implies it's in the past, it's set, you can't change it, deal with it. Um, the theory of karma holds that it's near impossible to slough off your karma, but it's not impossible. Personally, I believe, or it is my opinion, <laughs> um, that the mind can intervene to rectify itself. Or something can act upon the mind in order to satisfy the mind, to give the mind that which it wants, or the soul, or the will, or whatever. Um, we look around and we want perfection. Zafi says we can't have it. End of story. I say the jury's out. He can say that, but he's going to have to back it up. Um, Again, hard materialists or hard atheists would say, we are just, consciousness is nothing more than an emergent function of the brain, the central nervous system or whatever, which is itself just a function of the physical universe, never mind about anything else. Well, never mind, eh? You're going to have to prove to me that um, I should stop looking. It's not a case of um, me making a claim here. I'm saying, I don't know, or maybe. It's hard science that says, don't bother, <laughs> or a particularly negative type of philosophy. Um, if there's a point zero 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 one percent chance that we actually can actually intervene, that the inner self can intervene in our own perceptions and in our own facticity, in our own karma, um, then I would say it's insane not to attempt to follow that path if you are not satisfied with your experiences. If your experiences have led you to conclude that life is not satisfactory, well, as the guy said in the Shawshank Redemption, get busy living or get busy dying. Um, there doesn't seem to be a third option here. And by living, what does that mean? I don't mean going out into the world and wasting your time in futile endeavors. I mean going after that point zero 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 one percent of a chance or of a likelihood or Perhaps even it's not even a matter of chance. Maybe it's a matter of effort. Make that Herculean effort to reverse the ship. The ship is going backwards, per my um, my um, illustration of karma a couple of videos ago, where you saw that uh, four-cornered view. You're looking out the back window of a car. I'm saying, turn around. Look over the driver's shoulder into the windshield. Through the windshield. What do you see there? Um, 
What you see there is not karma. What you see there is desire, is that which is desired, the will, I guess. But people say, or people have been known to say, that the will wants blindly and cannot be satisfied. Prove it. <laughs> it wants something, but it often looks for it in the wrong places. In fact, I, it's possible that in the overwhelming majority of cases it looks in the wrong places. Or um, it's just beginning its search. When you say you're, I'm looking for something in this entire universe, I'm looking for a small object in this entire universe, I gotta start small. <laughs> it might be a gigantic, uh, a gigantic task that I've set myself, reversing the ship of karma, reversing the vehicle that I'm now, or at least turning myself around and facing in the other direction in the moving vehicle going up the street. That might be a gigantic task that may be beyond our strength. Maybe. It might not be. I don't really know how we can measure such a thing, because it's all based upon, again, experience. With our experiences, we are alone. Because <laughs> our experiences are a combination of our will and our um, our that experience which comes externally. <laughs> it's uh, Our experiences are a combination of what we perceive blindly and the interpretations we put on it. We have some input, or something has some input. Something has to say, life sucks, in order for life to suck. Something is evaluating life. Something has to say, I am in a state of enlightenment, or enlightenment has taken place even. Something has to say that. It doesn't have to be a spirit. It doesn't have to be metaphysical. It doesn't have to be outside of the real. It, it's not something one has to believe in, in my opinion. It seems to follow just simple reasoning that ultimately the apparent infinite regression or tautology may not be exactly that. There may be something on the receiving end of all of this. In fact, it looks pretty conclusive that there is something on the receiving end of it. But the problem is, it is different from the known. It is above the unknown.